Good morning, Bucket Pond family. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a sealed biosphere for ostracods. You could also call this an ecosphere, uh, either way. For this project, you will need a large jar, some marble chunks, organic compost, wild pond samples, and aquarium safe sand. Most of these materials can be acquired for a very low cost and some of them are even free as long as you have access to uh, the local environment. So to start with we have a large pickle jar here. I like to use pickle jars as they're uh, pretty cheap and uh, I like pickles you know. So I end up with a few of these large jars floating around. The lid is airtight and they're a pretty good size. I am using an organic uh, potting mix uh, for this project. Uh, this stuff here is really great, and I got it for a very low cost. Uh, it doesn't have any perlite or any polymer compounds in the soil. It's essentially compost, and it's really great. This is a Wallstad-style setup, and I will be including sand to cap the soil to keep it pinned to the bottom. You want to make sure that you don't uh, put too much soil in here, as that can actually turn the water toxic. It can you know, break down and decompose over time. So you want to use a very small amount of soil, uh, but you need enough to uh, es establish a uh, long life for the aquarium. We're basically setting up a, a lifespan for the biosphere here, and we're just going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, but you're using that sand to cover the soil element in the bottom and make sure that it does not float in the water column. Uh, trust me, if <laughs> if you don't include enough sand, then you will have a really big mess as the uh, soil element will float throughout the water and it'll ruin the tank. And now we're going to use a few of our local plants here. We have some climbing dayflower grown in one of my other aquariums in the background. Uh, this one happens to have a very healthy root on it, and it was a few feet long, so I cut it into uh, cuttings. This is climbing dayflower, and it grows very, very well from a cutting. And uh, it can be, you know, just floating in some water. You can root it. Uh, either way, it grows very quickly, and it's a very hardy plant, very easy to take care of. It does have uh, some wilted leaves on it, and we're just going to throw them into the biosphere. This will act as a food source for the creatures inside. They will happily uh, munch on these decaying leaves and break them down. And now the most fun and uh, also the most frustrating element of setting up a jar like this, uh, planting the jar. Now that long root element, I'm just going to let that sit on top of the sand, but these other cuttings I am going to push down into the sand and soil. And we'll use some of our rocks to uh, pin them down here in just a few minutes. Uh, but again, we're just plucking some wilted leaves and uh, just throwing them in there. Dayflower will occasionally have some wilted leaves on it, and that's fine. Uh, but there we go, our jar looks great so far. And now we're going to include our marble chunks. Uh, now this is actually calcium bicarbonate, I believe is the right word, calcium carbonate. And uh, yeah, I like to use marble chunks to uh, act as a pH buffer and just to establish a long-lasting biosphere, or an ecosphere, if you prefer that term. Uh, I was reading today about Carl Sagan, and uh, he actually had a ecosphere produced by a company called Ecosphere Associates, and they use uh, some coral, some dead coral, uh, as bio, as uh, excuse me, as calcium carbonate to um, act as a pH buffer. And I've always used marble chunks, and uh, you know I didn't even think about a correlation between what I do and what uh, they do over there at Ecosphere Associates, uh, but that's really cool. Uh, that we have very similar uh, methods, and I've just sort of stumbled into this. But we've been doing this a while, you know. And uh, now I'm adding water. Uh, this is essentially wild pond samples taken from our bucket ponds and from the pool pond out back. And yeah, uh, you can use any pond samples that you happen to have on hand, and try not to make a mess as you pour it in there, and be very careful not to pour uh, directly into the sand layer, as that will blow the sand away and allow the soil to float. If you don't have access to a pond or, you know, any kind of local uh, wetland type environment, you can get away with just using some clean water and some ostracods. 
but for this project it is going to be a sealed container and I'm adding the ostracods now in my pipette. Uh, but this, this is going to be a sealed biosphere, so I wanted to include a wide range of different creatures in here uh, to get things started, to establish an ecosystem, a food chain, basically uh, relying mostly on algae. We've also included some duckweed, some filamentous algae, and some of our own Nutella macroalgae, which comes along with cyanobacteria and some other elements. And now we're just going to stir it around a bit. I also uh, added a bit of water from a few of my fish tanks, uh, which comes with uh, beneficial bacteria. Now we're going to add a few marble chunks to help uh, pin the Nutella down to the bottom and hopefully get it to form some holdfasts, which are sort of like an, uh, a root for the algae. Uh, if we're lucky, it'll take down there and we'll have a very long-lasting, very uh, active uh, ecosystem. And here we are, about two hours later, I had to let the tank sit and release any gases built up in the soil. This is very important when you're building an ecosphere or a biosphere, uh, especially using the Wallstead method. You want to make sure that you let it sit for a while before you seal it up. Uh, but here we go, the tank looks pretty good. And uh, I'm hopeful that this project will run for a number of years. And uh, we'll have plenty of ostracods in here. Uh, plenty of other creatures, uh, plants, and algae. Up here near the surface, you can see a few of our worms and some of our tiny uh, microfauna living their little lives, getting started in this project. These worms are actually uh, very interesting. I wanted to include some tubaflex worms in here, but it seems as though we uh, got a hold of a few of our larger aquatic earthworms. I have no idea what species they are, uh, but I know that these guys can get very long, upwards of 5 to 7 inches uh, over the course of their lifespan. And uh, they are the uh, beloved boogie worms. Yes, they will, uh, as they grow, eventually bur uh, burrow down into the substrate. And they'll eat any detritus at the bottom, while uh, also like uh, waving around a bit like a, uh, <laughs> uh, like a worm, essentially. That's what they are but they will sort of dance at the bottom of the aquarium when they are uh, a bit larger. And I hope that we can get that on camera. Yeah, I love these little worms. These guys are very interesting. Hopefully we got some of our tubaflex in here as well, and uh, they tend to live at the surface. Uh, but here we are, looking at the uh, lower levels of the biosphere, and we have a few ostracods floating around. Uh, these ostracods came from my uh, the same tank seen in my previous video. And uh, they are very voracious feeders, and they seem to enjoy uh, munching on cyanobacteria, blue-green algae. That's why we wanted to include some of our own Nutella in here, which of course comes with blue-green algae. And I hope that we've provided a strong uh, start for this biosphere. There's another uh, ostracod there, sitting on a little stem. And a little bit lower here on the marble chunks, you can see a few more ostracods exploring and searching for food. I did not include any uh, food to start with. I, I should have added a slice of cucumber, honestly, to get things going. Uh, but I want to allow them to slowly increase their numbers and to let the biosphere find a balancing point. Uh, now looking at the very lowest levels, we happen to catch a drain fly larva. These guys are the bane of my existence. And they are the main reason that I'm switching away from the uh, open jar aquariums that we've been building. Uh, once these drain flies get into a project, uh, they cause a, uh, a series of disasters and ultimately it results in the failure of that project. Uh, I can't say for sure why. All I know is that they eat organic material and uh, once you get a few in here, uh, they become adults, they fly around the room, and they lay more eggs and it's just a a repeating process that results in the failure of the open jar aquarium. Here in a sealed biosphere, there shouldn't be much trouble. Now I did try to include some uh, surface life here. I'm hoping that we got a few springtails or some other small creatures. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that develops. But that's the basics of it, guys. We've built a sealed biosphere. You will notice that I left a fair amount of open air near the surface. And that's mostly due to our previous experiences with these ecospheres, these biospheres. 
it seems to help to have a fair amount of atmosphere in the jar. And I also did some reading today about how uh, certain lab-made ecospheres run by scientists, uh, how they did things, and they typically ran with half air, half water. So atmosphere is very important for a project like this. But that's it for today, guys. My name is Terry. This is Bucket Ponds, and I've shown you how to build an all-natural biosphere. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and join the Bucket Pond family. I will see you again soon. Thanks again. Have a great day.